Hi. In a previous video we took a look at this LG TV. Now this had an issue with the TCOM board, specifically with the AS15 chip. And uh, in that video we repaired the, uh, the replaced the chip basically that was causing the uh, fault with the screen and uh, we got the thing up and running. And as you can see I'm making good use of it here using a Raspberry Pi to add a display to my work area. We have still got the lines on the side of the screen I uh, can't really do much about those, but they do disappear after uh, sort of about 15-20 minutes of warm-up time. So that's working perfectly fine. So the big problem we've got is the remote control. So that's what we're going to tackle today and see if we can get this working correctly. Okay, so this is the remote control for this TV. Now this has never really worked from the get-go properly. And sometimes when it does work, you kind of have to press and hold on a button for couple seconds and it will actually do something. Uh, this doesn't really make it very good for navigating menus because you sort of press and hold on it. By the time it's sort of moved to another menu position it's skipped ahead two or three and uh, yeah it's just next to useless. Um, at the moment not doing anything at all. Can't see the light flashing on that. Now I've already tried a bit of debugging on this and I'm just completely stumped by it. I've uh, had it running on the power supply, no difference so it's not battery connection at all, nothing to do with batteries. Um, I did reflow all the solder joints that I could find on the board including the ones on the uh, controller chip on it and that sort of fixed it for about half an hour and then <laughs> back to uh, either not working or working sometimes. It does seem to have a tendency that if you flex it in the right position you can get it to do stuff so I'm sort of thinking is it that the uh, I fix the solder joints um, and then once it's back in the case, it's sort of causing the issue again. I'm not quite sure. So I think what we're going to do is rip it open again, we'll hook up the power supply to it, and we'll see what it's currently doing outside of its case. So I've removed the batteries, and then it's just a simple case of finding a spot on here to get the uh, spudger in on. And uh, just forcing the case open. It should come open quite easily, um, sort of now for me, because I've had this open quite a few times in uh, frustration. So that's the back cover off, that's just got the uh, sort of contacts there for the battery, the main contacts are here on the uh, board. And if we just take the board out, you can see this is just basically the main board. We've got our rubber pads there, we have actually got some clicky buttons here which are useful for testing it um, when you've not actually got it placed up against the, uh, the buttons there. Uh, so this is our uh, controller chip down here. So I've reflowed the uh, joints on there with the soldering iron. I've reflowed the joints on this part. Um, not actually quite sure what that is. I need to look that one up. Um, I've changed that capacitor. That's a new capacitor in there. No difference at all. I've checked and reflowed the contacts for the uh, battery there. And even done the uh, two little uh, resistors there, these not, um, these are just jumper links for configuration of the uh, remote. We have actually got a sort of a debug port breakout there, so we've got um, SDA, SCK, should be SCL shouldn't it? Um, yeah, so could probably uh, pick something up off that with the scope if need be. Um, but as I say, the biggest problem is it's just not really uh, sort of easy to pinpoint what's wrong with it. The board is bent and that obviously could be a problem. Um, having said that though I wouldn't have thought it's warped that much and I don't know if this see the whole remote control is bent and that's probably yeah it's got a crack in it there so that's probably the situation is it's it's sort of been sat on enough times um, in its past life um, and that has warped the board um, but we can't really do much to, to straighten that out. But that may be why it's, it's putting uh, pressure on part of it and uh, breaking one of the traces perhaps. But I would have thought that it would sort of knock one part out, not sort of knock the whole thing out. Um, the only thing I haven't done is uh, tried reflowing the uh, solder there on the IR LED. So that's something else we can try. So we get the power supply uh, powered up. So we've set that for... 3 volts, 100 milliamps should be fine. So on here we've got positive over here and our negative over here. 
or ground would be the correct term there. So power supply picked up, so we'll just turn that on. So if we press the button now, not attempting to draw any current, as you can probably see, nothing's happening with the LED at the minute. Now it's drawing some current now, but we can't see that. So let me just dim the lights. Okay, so hopefully you can see that it's now pulsing. And we are drawing uh, some current. But if I just press it once, there's nothing. So you've got to press and hold, which is um, it say just is no good when you trying to, you want it to just do what it's supposed to do. So I think the LED is working okay, um, the I already D. Uh, but it may be worth just reflowing those joints. What I'm going to try and do is reflow all of these again, and we'll just see if that makes a difference. Okay, so I've got the soldering iron warmed up, so I'm just going to reflow these solder joints again, just in case one has sort of slightly cracked itself again with the uh, board being flexed so this is that three pin device so I've been uh, trying to look that one up I couldn't actually find anything um, going by the markings on it um, but having a look around um, it looks like it's actually a um, ceramic resonator so I presume that's what's being used to uh, produce the uh, carrier frequency for the uh, infrared transmissions so that's interesting um, but I would, I would guess that's probably still working um, as it, and it does certainly do stuff occasionally when it feels like it so I'll just reflow those and just do this uh, contacts over here now I'm not sure if it's worth doing the chip again or not um, I suppose it won't really hurt it just to go across and sort of do two pins at once so I think it, it does seem to be, you can get it working and then once it's back in the case that seems to be the uh, problem, so I think it's because the case is bent um, and the board is bent, so it may be a case really that uh, we need a new uh, replacement shell for it or uh, probably it would be easier just to go on eBay and uh, buy another one of these remotes, so we'll just do the uh, the solder joints on the uh, infrared LED as well. Okay, so we'll hook the power supply back up again and uh, see if we've got getting any better results or not with that. Again, I'll just kill the lighting so you can see. And turn the power supply on, that would help, wouldn't it? So no, nothing at the minute, and that's with holding it down, we're getting absolutely nothing. Nope. So you can see this is very difficult to try and... Uh, figure out what's wrong with this and the fact that it will will work when it feels like it so um, yes yeah, so all those joints have been reflowed uh, I've got a slight bridge across one of those uh, solder joints on the uh, chip there so we just uh, get that one uh, cleaned up There's just another one here. Okay. Get the supply hooked up again. Alright, that's drawing the current now, 
So if we click on that, yeah, we're definitely getting that working exactly as it should. We don't have to hold that down anymore, so that's fine. But this is exactly the same um, issue that I had before. That I reflowed all the droids. Now it could be, of course, that um, it was the case that when I reflowed that chip um, the first time with the soldering iron, I did leave a very slight uh, bridge there, and it was just enough to uh, sort of make contact occasionally. But certainly, the original problem um, wouldn't have been caused by a um, a bit of stray solder on one of the uh, pins um, because that, unless it was done like that in the uh, factory but uh, as far as I know this remote probably did used to work um, absolutely fine um, it's just taken a bit of a beating over the years so it may well be that the uh, there have just been a, a few sort of cracks in the uh, solder joints on that chip there and then when I reflowed it of course I did fix it but had a slight um, a slight uh, solder bridge there that was uh, causing an intermittent issue. So we'll put it back together again. Um, I'm trying to line up the uh, oops, be a bit fiddly to uh, realign the contacts there. They just need to slide up inside some uh, little sort of slots in there. And try and get that in there. Not just the case, maybe. This is partly my fault because, in my uh, sort of attempt to, to fix it, I was sort of bending these around a little bit to try and get them to uh, make a sort of better contact on the uh, on the battery. So I'll just bend that one back over. These contacts here do look a bit uh, sort of corroded here. Um, batteries have obviously leaked in the past but I cleaned up the ends so that I know that they are actually making good contact with the uh, with the batteries. Right so that's uh, that in there, see when we get the uh, top back on again. You kind of have to do it this way around, otherwise, all the buses drop out. Okay, so that's the case back on. So we pop the batteries in again. And let's see if that's. Uh, hopefully you can see that is uh, that's responding as expected. So yeah, that wasn't really a uh, difficult fix. Um, yeah, I was hoping it would be somewhat more interesting than that. So yeah, I think sort of moving on with that one then, it seems quite possible that when I originally reflowed the chip, I ended up with a very slight solder bridge, and uh, yeah, that was uh, just intermittently causing the issue. But having said that, the last time I got this working, it was absolutely fine. About half an hour later, it failed again. So I can't sort of say, yes, this is definitely uh, definitely repaired. But so far, so good. That is working as expected and brilliant. So now I've got a TV that works, remote control that works for the moment. And uh, yeah, if this fails again, I'm sure there will be another video. So. Thanks so much for watching and uh, my apologies if it wasn't the most uh, super interesting video. I was hoping it would be a bit more complex than that. But there we are, this is what happens in the world of repairing electronics. So if you like the video please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I'll catch you soon for the next one. Cheers.